Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Today I'm going to be talking about a mystery object which has shown up in webcam footage from Australia. Now Prep Aussie has done a couple videos on this and he claims that this is Nibiru present in webcam footage down there in Australia. You can see it's surrounded by this red mysterious glow and it has an actual shape to it. So let's figure out if this could be a real planet in the night sky. First of all, this is the website where he's pulling these images from. It's a weather camera network, and you can go through the archives and download the images from previous nights, which makes it very easy to uh, measure and perform analyses. Uh, and from that, we can try to determine whether this is a real object or not. Fortunately, we have it easy. In the past, I've done videos similar to this where I've used the motion of the sun in order to calibrate the image. But in this case, we actually have it quite easy because there are stars plainly visible in the image. These aren't actually hot pixels, these are actually stars, and you can see that if you go through multiple images. So let's go back here. This is 3.50 a.m., uh, and it's on May 3rd there in Australia. As you go through time, you can see these are actually stars. They're not hot pixels, they're not remain, remaining fixed in place, and they are moving with the sky. So we can perform uh, an analysis of these images quite easily. Uh, by using those stars to calibrate the image. Now, I cropped the images to get rid of the tree line here, to get rid of this bright light over here, and to get rid of the text at the bottom of the image, which would all tend to distract uh, the software when trying to solve uh, the image astrometrically. But in doing that, I was able to successfully solve the images astrometrically. So I solved images from both uh, May 2nd and May 3rd. Uh, you can see here, these are images from May 2nd. And then a couple of images from May 3rd. And you can see our mystery object is in all of these images. But now we actually have astrometrically solved images that we can use to determine an orbit for the object. So if we go into SAO DS9, we can actually measure the coordinates of the object quite precisely. So I've labeled it here by the time. Uh, 410 corresponds to 410 AM. And it's actually 4.10 a.m. and 30 seconds uh, in Australia by uh, local time there where the webcam is located. Uh, and that turns out to be 10 hours advanced from GMT. So actually it's May 2nd uh, by GMT when it's May 3rd uh, in Australia. But you get the idea. Now this bright object down here is indeed the moon. And I'll show you how the coordinates here do match the coordinates expected for the moon at that time. And actually we need to look here at J2000 coordinates. And uh, this is again, May 2nd by universal time is May 3rd um, by local time there in Australia where this webcam is located. And at that time, these are the coordinates expected of the moon. And if we plug that into the image, sure enough, that puts us right there where that bright object is. Now, this object up here is our mystery object. Now, SAO, image DS9 uh, can only display the images in black and white, but this is the red channel uh, from that image. So you can see that glow around it. This is the same object we see in uh, Prep Aussie's videos. And we can actually measure those coordinates quite precisely. So that's what I've done. I've measured the coordinates across each of the images and uh, log those in order to determine the orbit. So you can see these are the measured locations uh, of the object across all the images across both nights. I solved each of those uh, images in sequence. This is uh, May 2nd at 310, 320, 330, then May 3rd at 410, and 420. So by measuring um, the object's position and getting the actual uh, astrometric coordinates, I plug that into find orb and solved for the orbit. Now, where did that get us? What is the solution? So, find orb has a fair bit of difficulty in determining an orbit here, but it did find a match that lines up fairly well with the astrometric observations. However, this orbit it's this perigee. Well, that means it's an Earth-centric orbit. In fact, 
it turns out it's actually suborbital. In order to explain how this object is moving, the only orbit that could fit it is an orbit uh, with Earth at its center. It's an Earth-centric orbit. In fact, it's suborbital, so this leads to impact. That's right. This object would have impacted Earth before it was ever seen, and it would impact it again and again and again. You're dealing with a very eccentric orbit, which has a perigee distance of only about 2.4 kilometers from the center of the Earth. Yeah, it would slam into Earth pretty much coming straight down. So, yeah, if this were Nibiru, that would mean Nibiru is a suborbital object that has already slammed into Earth. <clears throat> ah, dear. But that's the conclusion we reach if we assume that the object seen on this webcam is an actual object in space. Of course, it's garbage in, garbage out. If you feed Find Orb the coordinates of what is actually a lens flare and reflection of the moon, then you're going to get garbage results. And that's exactly what's happening here. You can see that the object moves in the opposite manner of the moon's motion. So as the moon is coming up, this webcam is facing east. As the moon is coming up, the object is moving against the stars and against the moon and setting in the east. It did this both on May 2nd and on May 3rd. Well, what are we left to conclude from that? The only kind of orbit that could possibly move in that manner, setting in the east on consecutive nights, would have to be an Earth-orbiting object. If it were out in deep space, it wouldn't do that. Even if it moved that fast or was that close to Earth that it uh, beat out the Earth's own rotation and set in the east, by the next night, it would be much farther away. And the night after that, and the night after that, you wouldn't see it repeating its motion night after night. If you see it repeating the motion night after night, that means it's orbiting the Earth, if you assume that it actually is a real object. And if you plug in the coordinates, the solution you get, well, turns out the sucker's already hit Earth. Impact. In fact, I still have Find Orb loaded up here. There it is. Impact. May 1st. It already blew up the Earth. There you go. That's all there is to it, really. And why does it look like this? Well, what you're seeing here is the crescent of the moon. It's just vertically mirrored. It doesn't look like a crescent, does it? Well, that's because the moon is drastically overexposed here. You can't see the shape of the moon. In fact, its size is really just a function of its brightness in the image. If you're going to be exposing the moon so deeply that you can start to see the stars, that means you're going to be completely overexposing the moon. The moon's a very bright object. And this leads to lens flaring. In fact, that red mysterious glow, it's not actually limited to the reflection of the moon, although it is present around there. If you look very carefully around the moon itself, you can see a bit of red glow uh, surrounding the moon. There's a bit of a red glow here and here and here. It's fainter, but it's there. It's a very common type of lens flare you see very frequently, webcams and cell phones and that kind of thing, when pointing at really bright objects and overexposing them. This isn't at all surprising. And like I said, it's moving in the opposite manner to the way that the moon is moving. As the moon's rising, this thing's coming down. And when the moon hits the center of the image, oh, look, the object is also in the center of the image. The further the, ob uh, the moon is from the center of the image, the further the object is from the center of the image. It's a classic lens flare situation. But it's also producing an actual reflection of the moon, which is vertically mirrored. Very common in filter flares, although this has more of an appearance of a general uh, lens flare, where you have uh, motion of the lens flare in the opposite direction to uh, the object that's producing it. So that's all there is to it. And again, if you want to assume that this is actually a real object, which only happens to mimic the motion of a lens flare somehow, well, then you're forced to conclude that Earth has already been hit by it. Hope that uh, puts this mystery to bed. Thanks for watching. Clear skies, folks. Have a nice day.